viewers. All right, you guys, I'm Colleen Ferrari with Small Business USA. You guys are probably sick of me. You know me. Um, we love to bring content like this to you all the time because we think it makes you a better business owner. It makes you more educated. And today, it's actually, you're going to probably learn very clearly if you've ever read any of my content and my blogs, but this is really selfish. It's to help me as well. So, um, I want to introduce you to Peggy Fudd. Peggy, I've known for a couple years. She owns Speaking Skillfully. And I'm going to let you, Peggy, start off by introducing yourself a little bit. But a couple of things before you get started, I just want to mention about Peggy. Um, and I, you know, anybody who knows me knows I can't shut up, and I'm going to interject now and again. But um, Peggy is a speech and language pathologist by trade. Right? And she's really taken that and helped corporations and small businesses figure out how to connect with an audience. So today, I think one of the challenges, you can have a thousand people look at your post, but are you connecting with them? And that Peggy's going to talk about blogging and, and help us go through the steps to do that today. So um, some just light housekeeping, there's a chat button across the bottom of your screen. Use it. Let us know you're out there. Ask questions. There's a Q&A button or there's a chat button. So take advantage of it. And I'm going to bore you by reading the, that chat out loud because in the replay you don't see it. And I want everybody to hear your great questions. So with no further ado, Peggy Bud, thank you for joining me. Tell everybody about yourself, please. Okay, well, thank you, Colleen, and thank you for having me here today, and I'm really excited. I hope that all of our listeners really benefit from making their blogs uh, better than they are or taking the risk and trying it and writing. My, As you said, my background is speech and language, uh, so communication and being an effective communicator is who I am. It's at the core of everything I do. I began in public education as both a teacher and an administrator. But then I found it speaking skillfully and decided that I was going to use my skills to help businesses be more productive and business people and professionals be able to be more successful because communication is what affects your bottom line. If um, there's a breakdown in communication, that's going to impact everything that happens. So I do help people by coaching and helping them be effective communicators. I do training as well. And one of the things that's really near and dear to me is I've been working with men and women on communication and how that's linked to unconscious bias. Where are my Trump comments now, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, we'll hold those. But really, it's all about the fact that we do communicate differently, and that's great, and we should be, but we need to understand each other. And that we could do as a different webinar. And I also, because education was there, I do help families become more effective communicators um, building a homeschool partnership. But today we're going to talk about blogging, and I'm really excited, and I hope people will ask questions um, or contact me afterwards. And I will help you whether it's with blogging or help you and those in your business be more effective communicators because it is going to impact your customers, your clients, and build you a better business. Okay? I'm going to share a quick little story about um, how, you know, why this call came up. If you don't. Oh, I love it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So um, Peggy and I have known each other for a few, two or three years probably now. And um, so one of my colleagues that is um, representing Small Business USA, one of our consultants, wrote a post. And Peggy hated it. <laughs> so to um, protect me and my interest, Peggy rewrote it. And when I read it, you know, she sent, um, he and I both a copy of it, and she wrote a section of it. And when I read it, I was like, oh, this is brilliant. Why haven't we done this all along? We totally need this, this help and this guidance. And um, what was really interesting is he didn't feel the same way. <laughs> and I always say, sometimes writing is like going into somebody's underwear drawer, right? And it's like really, really personal. But I think what Peggy teaches us here today is um, – how to kind of get past the stuff 
that keeps people from disliking it as well as giving using tools that are going to help people connect with it more so so peggy what's a blog is it is blogging is, is it just a fad is it going away or is it going to be replaced by you know something beyond snapchat probably not uh and i love that story and you know colleen you're so right that what you were saying i wrote that comment and, and just rewrote a little bit and I wasn't asked for it and men getting back to women and men men don't like unsolicited advice so I think that's why he didn't like what I had to say partially but the other thing that you and I have can, talked about is a blog um, has to have a specific message and it can't be too broad but it also has to target an audience and I think you and I talked about the fact that the blog he wrote targeted his audience. And I'm not really quite sure how I got on that mailing list that I saw that blog. But uh, when we write, we write differently for different audiences. And I think you have explained to me that that's what's going on. Well, I will but tell you what's very interesting about that. And Peggy, you bring up a really good point. It, he wrote specifically to his audience, which is a very technical, analytical audience which clearly is not me right not I, me either <laughs> so i'm more emotionally driven connective marketer right and um and so out of his audience base he had the best click through and the best viewership that he has ever gotten but it goes to that point where you write about your passion you write who you are and make sure you know who your audience is right so Absolutely. it was interesting that, you know, you said, I don't know how I got on that mailing list. I don't. I really but, don't. Yeah, good point for all of us. Sorry. Um, that's okay. A blog is actually, some people have, think about what's the difference between a blog and my website. A website is much more static. We post things out there. It tells people about our product or our services, and it's just there. It doesn't have a lot of opinion. It doesn't really generate our personalities. Uh, it's just very, it's much more factual. Blogs, whether you're blogging on your website, whether you're blogging in all kinds of other places that we can talk about, wherever your blog appears, it's going to be talking about a very specific idea or thought it shouldn't be kind of a brain dump. We shouldn't just be writing in um, stream of consciousness because we, our reader is going to see that and he's probably or she's not going to necessarily read the whole blog. They're going to skim through it and they're, they need to connect with you because that's why they want to become your customer or your client. So let's think about blogging. It defines who you are. People are going to get to know you. People follow bloggers and they, they get to know them. My husband blogs every five days a week. And when he meets people, they say, wow, I want to meet you because I feel like I know you because of what you write every day. Um, I think that is such a good point, Peggy, because, you know, I look, and I've shared this with a lot of our members and almost a hundred almost 100% of our business comes in two ways. One is from content that someone read, they've been following me, they've been following our message with Small Business USA, and the other one is referrals. It's pretty cut and dry. I do a meetup group, I mean, it's, it's good, or I'll do a networking event, but what I, it doesn't even make sense for us to do it anymore because this is more valuable and we, we get more traction from this type of thing. But, um, and, and I also think it acts as your resume when people are questioning who's Peggy Budd or who's Colleen Ferrari. And um, it, it kind of questions, helps you answer the question for them. Does she know what she's talking about? Is she credible? Because they can go to your LinkedIn profile and they can go and look at what you've written and they can either agree with it or disagree with it. So I, I love that you brought up, it really does define who you are. Right, and it defines what you do, and you're right. People are going to check you out. If they read something, they want to know more about you. Uh, so this is, that is, they are going to go to LinkedIn, and they are going to look at your profile. But what they're doing is they're going to find out what you do, and you have to establish yourself as a leader or and or an expert. 
because if you're going to use your services or use your product, I want to know that you're an expert. So when you blog, you can write your opinion, but make sure you can support it. You don't want to write something that okay. somebody's going to say, well, that's not true. It doesn't, if it's your opinion and you can support it because different uh, services present things different way, different products have different meanings, but make sure that what you write is, is accurate for you and you want to make sure that they see you as an expert because cool. as you said, it's going to drive people to your website or to your brand. And from that, people are going to build trust and you're going to develop that relationship. And that's what business is all about. It's we go to people that we trust and we trust them because we feel like we know them. Like they said, if, if somebody reads what you write and follows you or just reads what you write, you write an article on and you post it on LinkedIn, a blog on LinkedIn, and they go, wow, that really hits what I need. They're going to reach out to you. I've had people do that. They've called me because they saw, I liked how you talked about, um, writing a thank you note when regarding um, a resume or how email can be breakdown communication. And because of what I've written, they then come to me because I've built trust and I've built a relationship. And that's what you have to do when you blog. There's this real cute girl. She's a beauty editor for a magazine and she's got a blog out there and she talks about what is the right thing and the wrong thing to do when you're blogging. And she said, when she was a college student, so you know, kind of dating how, how young she is actually, but she said when she was a college student, she would always write about cooking. She said she didn't have any of the tools. She was in a dorm room. She wasn't a great cook. She was writing about cooking because she wanted to learn about it, but she had zero credibility because she made so many mistakes and this blog was such a disaster. And then when she started writing about what she loved and what she was passionate about, what she knew, her following now, you know, I was just looking at her most recent post had 150,000 views. And it's just when you know it, and I, with, with all this noise about fake news, write about what you know and what you're passionate about. Make sure it's real. And, and from my own perspective, as, a, as the owner of Small Business USA, I mean, somebody's going to read this post and treat it like gospel, even if we tell them not to. So the accuracy, just remember people are following you. And, and it's, I love this. It builds trust and relationships. If you lead them down the wrong path, that, that's the fastest way to break that. It is. And remember, a blog should be just a very small idea or point so that you want to sort of, you're hooking people, you're getting them interested in what you can do and your, what you can uh, provide for them. So even though you might have lots to say, each blog post should only be one, one idea so that they really know what they've read, uh, whether, it's if, whether it is in beauty, uh, you know, how to pick the best blush or um, how often do you wash your hair. You're not going to write a blog about all the different things about hair because you want to be very specific. You can write 10 blogs because uh, on that topic. So, so um, if you write it, they will come. <laughs> is true or it. not true? I think it is true. I think if you write something, and it's going to start, it's going, blogging is going to start small. And the more you blog, the more you write articles, the more you get your name out there, like anything else, the more people are going to get to know you. One of the great things about blogging is that it's, it's not advertising in some respects, but it is advertising because it's advertising you, who you are, your expertise, what you can do, which is great. And guess what? It's free. So why wouldn't every business want to use the great device that can reach thousands of people and yet isn't going to cost them the postage? It isn't going to cost them the manpower to stuff envelopes, it isn't going to cost them anything, but they can reach everybody. And that's, that's great. The other great thing about blogging is it's not instant. You write something uh, and some people are going to read it. But guess what? If you write it and it's out there, because everything we post out there doesn't go away. And that's the one thing people have to remember. 
So you want to make sure that it's going to put you in a good light, but think about it. You wrote something today and some people read it. Well, somebody might read it tomorrow. Somebody write, might read it next week or next month. So a blog and when you write these articles, they're ongoing uh, perpetuation of who you are, what you have to offer. And then somebody has a problem, as you said, and they Google it. And all of a sudden your blog pops up. Oh, now you've got a customer or a potential client. So it, it is the next big thing, but it's going to change some because everything changes. Um, the, the iPhone that we first saw when Steve Jobs came out is not the iPhone we have today, but it's still an iPhone and we're still using that kind of technology. So I imagine that there are going to be ways to get things better in the way that we post or the way that we do it. But the idea of writing a blog and sharing information and being able to touch um, 10, 100, 1,000, thousands of people is going to continue to only grow and get better. Let me interject. I'm going to throw my marketing hat on for a minute and um, yeah. everybody grab a pencil. So a couple things I want to make sure you do and that you know when you blog. First of all, your main goal is to convert someone to a client when you blog, right? That's why you're throwing this out. Unless, unless you just want to say what you're saying, that's fine. But your main goal is conversion here. So in order to have great conversion, you need to do a couple really important things here. One, you need to get them to your website. So please don't look at my blogs because I don't do this well, but I'll tell you how to do it well. It's like, you know, those who don't do teach, right? But um, if you write, <laughs> if you have a blog page on your website, it is so much more effective. Write your blog on your website, share it on LinkedIn. I love the posts on LinkedIn. That's where I tend to kind of put my creative energy um, when I post something. Many people, the experts that are really good at this, they write the post on their website, they publish some of it on LinkedIn with a link that brings them back to their website. However you do it, I, I want you to do a couple things. On your email address, when you send out emails, on the bottom, I want you to put a link that says, follow me on LinkedIn, right? Just, it's, you can put the link on there and anybody who clicks it now will get in their inbox the blogs that you wrote. They'll get, hey, you know, see what Colleen Ferrari is doing now. That is the best way to start building your following. The other thing is anytime you post something, make sure that you have some links in there that link back to your website, back to where they want you to go and put at the bottom how they can get a hold of you, who you are. I was going to say that because it is so important. I'm so amazed when somebody just doesn't need, maybe they have their name and then you try to find them and you can't. And another important thing, if you, that's why, whether it's on your website, whether it's on LinkedIn, Facebook, or any other social media that you're using to post, make, if you can have them not just like, but have a way to make a comment because that's good feedback and it's another way to develop a conversation because a blog could be a conversation. I think too many people also worry about the fact that I want everything to be positive and everybody has to agree with me. Um, to quote somebody years ago who said to me when I first started out, if everybody likes what you do, if you make everybody happy, you're not doing your job. The same thing is true. If everybody agrees with everything you've written, how is that possible? You have services, you're unique, you do it your way, can show people somebody might disagree with it, it's okay, as long as you're not saying something that's not true. So let those comments. And another way to drive people, because again, you're trying to get business, you're trying to develop relationship. If somebody makes a comment, respond to them and if possible go out find them on linkedin or find them and maybe write them another note that says so that you start continuing that conversation you know it's funny um quick story i've, I've made so many friendships and so many clients through those conversations after and i consider what we're doing today our own personal blog post you know it's just because it's a, it's a video blog, right? This is a way to give information, share information that's gonna go out there as well. But um, one of my good friends just spewed something in one of these calls about how ridiculous somebody's comment was. 
And before we knew it, we're having coffee and we're good friends. And, you know, we go out for lunch every month and, and, um, and share ideas and brainstorming. So it's, you know, those conversations are so valuable. And even the ones like, I mean, his comment was, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, you know? <laughs> and, and that spurred so much more. So don't be afraid to have those conversations. And I'm going to just share one other thing to that point, Peggy. Kyle Reyes is um, one of, you know, a great marketer. He, he's really known for his outrageous marketing. But if you've ever seen anything that he's done in the past year, he's really shifted towards being inflammatory. He's really kind of jumped on this far right wing kind of military gun toting. You know, if you're not in the, you know, if you're too far liberal, he's going to beat the heck out of you kind of um, persona. And he's posting about it. Let me tell you, there is an audience. People who are passionate care. And there's a lot of Americas we learned with this last election. And he is just capitalizing on it. And just since he really started sharing his opinion and sharing who he really is, I've just watched those numbers just skyrocket of followers and people who are sharing and engaging because he's talking from his heart, you know, and, and it's such a good way. Like you're fault. You don't have to fit in a box either. You know, be who you are. Peggy, I'm sorry. I'm just making this longer and longer and I apologize for keep going on and on. So, so where do you post? How do I make sure it gets read? Well, I think we've kind of covered that yeah. a little bit. I think you're right. You need it. Put it, put it on your website. And the difference between your website and the posts is the posts are going to be in a, a chronological order on how they, how you posted them, or your website is just the static piece. But you might want to tweet, if you were a tweeter, um, a few uh, lines that will, again, link somebody back to reading your blog because you're trying to get yourself out there. You want to get your name out there. You want to get people to know who you are, what you think, what you have to offer them uh, so that they will come to you. Uh, I do a lot of resume review. And so I'm oftentimes I've written things about how to write a good resume or how to write a good cover letter. Because when I'm reviewing resumes, I see that, the weaknesses that are going to not allow them to get um, into a job or get into a position that they want. The same thing when I work with people, helping them get a pitch, I'll write something about how to do a good elevator pitch so that it will happen. But you only want to write a little bit and then post it. And as we talked about the audience, you want that audience right to the audience and where you post might be what you write and where you post um, are, can be different on different topics. I'm going to um, quote Gary Vanderchuk for a minute. He goes, get an effing keyword in your title. And I'm like, okay. But I, I think there, you know, there's a lot of conversation about keywords being overused and don't, like don't write right now with keywords in mind, write from your passion, the rest will find it. But when you look at the title of your blog, I just want you to think that is your first marketing tool, right? And there's a site that I love called AM Institute. It's American Marketing, I think, AM Institute. And they have a headline analyzer and it gives you a really good indication of how strong your title is. But um, again, those who don't do teach, cause I just write very passionately and, um, I just spew information, whatever my members are talking about, whatever they've got me all fired up about. And I'm studying at that moment. I just send it out to the universe. But, um, when you look at those, that title, that's what draws people. Like it should hit on those, those emotional triggers that say, I need to read this. It's going to make my life easier. It's going to make my life better when I read this. So don't underestimate that title of a blog when it's when you want to get it read and posted. You're right. And and I think one thing though that people obsess about when they're writing is well, I have to come up with a title. What am I writing about? There's a lot of different ways. We're talking about how do we get started. There are a lot of different ways to get started. And one, each of us is different. So we um there might be the best way for one person to get started, or we may try different ways at different times because people say, I can't blog. I can't think of what to write. 
So you're right. One way to get started is to kind of come up with that purpose, that title. But you know what? Sometimes coming up with that great, catchy title, it's too hard at the beginning. So just have what I like to think about as a draft title or a working title, which is really what you're writing about, that purpose. That's one way to do it. And then after you've written, you can come back and get a better title. Good titles, um, can't, we don't want them too long because people aren't going to remember them or they're going to get bogged down in what it means. You also want a title that could be catchy. So using alliterations, um, you know, planning, uh, planting <laughs> for the fall or something, uh, you know, the, the three best ways to buy, um, you know, whatever, so that people start thinking about uh, those catchy titles. Rhymes can do that, uh, or a keyword, but you, because they are gonna Google you, so a keyword could drive them to that, that, that title can do it, but titling is important. Uh, and titling appeals to different people. I've, as I said, I've done stuff on, um, I've done presentations and I've written a lot about women and, and the, the gender divide, so to speak. And I'm going to be speaking on that. Uh, and when I sent the title into this uh, women's summit, they didn't like my first title, which was, why can't a woman speak more like a man? Now, I thought that was a great title and I used it um, when I, uh, on a different similar topic when I spoke to a group of women and people just loved the title this group didn't so now I've changed my title to communication bridging the gender divide so again different audiences are even going to respond to the title differently you know I love the title of this page kind of little segue here because one of the biggest opportunities that my business owners talk about is I'm not a great writer. And anybody who's read anything I've written knows that I'm not a great writer. I just throw it out there. I, I'm in the car with my phone, I hit notes, and then I hit the little speaker and I go and I just start talking. And I turn that into a blog because it's a rant that's turned into a blog. I am terrible grammatically with punctuation. I just want to get my message out there. And I'm gonna I, I share that because again, it's the number one source at besides referrals, the number one source of new clients for Small Business USA. And it's not great. So obviously I want to be better, but Peggy, do you have to be a great writer? I think I answered my question, but let, let's help people realize that they can do this. And this is important. And it doesn't matter if you're not a great writer. You're right. First of all, Blogging is not, you're not writing the great American novel. You're not even writing the, a great chapter in a book. Your, your, a blog should be your voice and your personality and who you are. Now, from my perspective, I think that when somebody reads something, that's initially, that's all they know about you is what they read. Uh, like the blog that I read, I thought it was so technical and I was so bogged down and in, in what was going on that I didn't get it. But people who understood the, the writer did get it. So it uh, goes again to your audience and to your reader. But I think that you should, I think your method of spewing and talking and doing that is great. My guess is if you really read it carefully, you probably have two or three or four blogs in that one rant that you've gotten your ideas from what you heard on the news or what you read or what a problem somebody told you and you're trying to answer it. So to really make a blog powerful, I would go back and I like, I like to say, let's read and then edit and then reread and not just write what you feel and click. I see people doing that and there's spelling errors and grammar errors and I'm a really fussy person. So if I see that, I think, mm, you know, is that how they're going to treat my business or is that how they're going to do things that they're not real careful? So I look at that. But to some people, it might not bother them. Uh, a lot of 
people like that they put on their iPhone, please excuse type where it says, please excuse typos. This is written on an iPhone. I'm saying, well, it doesn't matter where it was written. So that's personal and that's my perspective. And some people might totally disagree with me and that's okay. I don't, you know, I don't know how to, my aunt is a, um, she is a professor at Stanford and she teaches writing. And so when I first started blogging, I don't know, um, is right when I left corporate America, I started this blog site called Latte Leadership and I kind of put all these people's ideas together. It was great. We had like 180,000 views, which I thought was fantastic for the first year. And um, I shared with her my writing and she said, Colleen, the problem with your writing is you write like you speak. And we okay. love you. So if we love you, we love your writing. But if we don't know you, you've just confused the hell out of us. And you know what? Some people are going to read and, and get to know you. Uh, as I said, my husband blogs five nights a week and he, he blogs like he talks. He doesn't talk like I talk and that's okay because this is who he is. So I think that uh, there's a piece of that is what you want because when you are, you were using this, as we said, to drive people to our business, to, to get customers. So, we want them to like us and like who we are. And if we like the way you write or your style or your thoughts, that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at some of the names uh, of the participants on this call. And um, so I think some of you actually know who I'm going to talk about. Joe Petrowski, who is one of my favorite people. Um, he is, he, is, he owns a very, very large, very large mortgage company works out of eight States and he blogs every single day. He said he gets up at 5 a.m. He first thing he does every morning is he blogs for a half an hour. Now, Peggy's going a half an hour, you know. He blogs every single day. And then like so I went and I followed his blog and I encourage you all to do that. Type in Joe Petrowski's blog. And I will tell you it's beautiful because it's him. It's short, it's brief, it breaks every single rule that any marketer or anybody is ever going to tell you. Sometimes it's a joke. Sometimes it's a story about a client he just helped. Sometimes it's a subject or issue that he's really passionate about, but he's present every single day and he's got an amazing number of followers and he will tell you that he's built his business completely on blogging. That's the only marketing he does now. And I think that's fine. And some, I'm just probably not confident enough to, to just write basically click and shoot. Lots of people do. I've found sometimes when I've done that without thinking because of other circumstances that I've gotten myself into trouble. <laughs> so I'm, I'm leery of that. Uh, my husband does not take that long. He, he basically can do it in a half an hour to 45 minutes if that he writes about a problem or a situation that's happened. Um, but he definitely does spend the time to always check a resource. So if he does a quote or if he refers to a movie or something that's going to make his point, he definitely makes sure that he has everything accurate because I'll tell you, if he doesn't, he gets lots of emails saying that's not the way the, the character <laughs> said it or that's not the exact quote that that was going on. So we want to make sure that we are accurate. That being said, you're right. It does. It can be a little story. Um, it doesn't have to be this great invention and this great creative mind juices because that's not the product. He's, he's trying to get people to come to him so they can get mortgages. They're not looking for an Ernest Hemingway or a Shakespeare. <laughs> They're looking for somebody that's knowledgeable about his subject matter. And so he becomes real and that's okay. Amen. And that's what it's gotta be. It's gotta be real. It's gotta be your voice. And you're right. The more you blog, the better you are. And it doesn't have to be, they say that a blog can be 300 words. I would say it could be a hundred words. It could be 20 words. It could be a quote of the day. I've seen people who just put out a quote of the day, a thought for the day. That's great too. And then it could be a thousand words and different blogs on different days can be different. And it's okay because it's generating that business. It's creating, going back, it's creating relationships. 
it's creating trust and it's selling who you are, what you, the expert in whatever your business is, has to bring to hopefully potential customers and clients and they're going to be all over and they're not going to be on that little news, you know, that newsletter where you get all these people to subscribe. Hopefully it's going to be beyond that because you want new customers. Those are established customers. I want to talk about um, how do you get your ideas, but before I kind of, we walk into that next topic, you know, Tim Ferriss, um, he's got a very interesting style and it's so odd and ironic and, and so different than I would expect from the four hour work week dude, right? But uh, Tim Ferriss said, he, he writes only long blogs. He puts a ton of time and effort into it and he writes a blog that is written for the future. So when he writes a blog, he expects it to gain momentum two years from now. But it generally um, is generally focused on what he's studying and researching and it's not, he always tries to think about how is the world going to change. But I think it's really interesting because whereas we kind of hear this 800 word thing with Google, his are, it could be eight or nine pages, his blog. But I, I think, you know, is it, I, it's hard to argue with Tim Ferriss's success, right? Whereas he gets millions of hits on that eight page blog. It's about him being real. He's delivering little books, little vignettes. He wants to be the great American writer, I guess. But I think it's doing it your way and, and connecting. And, and I think we'll hopefully get back more into how do I connect with my audience conversation. But before we do that, let's, um, how do you come up with ideas? Peggy, this is the most common question. What do I write about? There's a million blogs out there. There's a ton of content out there. How do I decide what I'm going to write about? How do I get it going? Well, I think that a good way for anybody who's in any, whether it's to drive your business in any way, I would suggest people keep a journal, keep something that is a way it's sort of, and then it becomes your, your idea bank. So like you were saying, somebody had an experience with a client. And so he writes about it that, um, that Joe writes about it the next day. Well, if you have something that happens and you don't have to write the whole thing out in your journal, write something that's going to remind you, is it the problem that happened, a conversation that you had? Is it something you heard on the news that you um, read about in the paper? Is it something that happened to you personally that you say, wow, my product or my service can deal with that? Because again, you want to let people know how you feel, and what you think, and how you're an expert in this area. So uh, I look at everything through the communication lens. I feel like that's the basis of everything, that if we're not an effective communicator, uh, it's just not going to work. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, successful people have to be great communicators, but, and they have to know how to collaborate um, as well to work together so that because no man is an island, so to speak, to quote John Donne. <laughs> uh, we all have to work together. So we need, so that's the way, what are those problems we encountered? And if we can sit down, if people can get into the habit of writing some reflections, then they have a bank when they want to blog. That's one way. Another way, in not just those keywords, but whatever it is, whatever your product or service is, start writing words or ideas that link to it just as they come to your mind if i was going to write about communication i could think about what are all the aspects of nonverbal communication that people want to talk about so i don't want to write a blog on nonverbal communication i might write a blog on the value of eye contact or i might even because we want to be as specific or i might say eye contact when talking on the phone and talk about the fact that when we're even answering the phone, people can tell if we're looking at them or focusing and not multitasking and to write a blog about that. So start writing those kinds of ideas. And then as you start to um, need, want to write blogs and you have to decide what is your purpose? How often do you want to write? Most people are not going to be at least at the beginning, writing every day. Uh, 
they'll be lucky if they write once a week or once a month. And it's okay because it's just a matter of, but now you've got that journal, that think tank, whatever you want to call it, something that you can go and refer to as you think of things. Because if you say, oh, I remember, that's a great idea to write a blog about. You go to sit down, that idea will be, um, you know, will be your senior moment, even if you're 22 and you won't remember it. <laughs> you know, I wanted, to, I do want to say a few, um, I love that. And for me, as a marketer, putting my marketer hat on, um, having some consistency about how often you post is a really good thing. It shows when people go and look at your LinkedIn profile, let's say, or your website, if nothing has been added for two years, there's a question mark that automatically jumps up. And so from my good friend, Scott Gumbar of um, Gumbar uh, Marketing, he actually brought to my attention the other day the power of repurposing old blogs too. Yeah. Because there's some, you know, I think about, you know, years, a couple of years ago, I wrote this article about fake consultants. And it really basically is people who just don't know how to, there's way too many people that hang a shingle. It was one of my most successful blogs. If I re, if I t pulled that back up, reorganized it a little bit, made it more relevant to today, 2017, and then sent it back out. With the followers that I have now, I can't even imagine what would happen to that. So I, I think um, to Scott's point, don't be afraid to repurpose old stuff that, you, that you've written too to just make sure that you're staying on top of it. It's a great way, great way to just keep it flowing when you're having a dry spell. Well, and, and repurposing, my husband does that all the time. I mean, because he, as I said, he puts some blog out five nights a week, uh, you know, every year and he's been doing this since 1999 so he definitely has a lot but he also repurposes sometimes he you know changes it some uh sometimes he says he's actually put the same blog out there first of all remember you're you're reaching to new audiences so pe people that read it you're getting new people to read it and he's also got comments where somebody will say to him you know i read that i remember reading that blog but you really reminded me of that topic because if it's an important topic guess what we need to keep reminding people people do not learn as the educator i'll tell you we don't learn something necessarily the first time we hear it or the first time we read it so if that's the case and we know it is research tells us we want to hear it again uh, it can be the same way or different we don't want to hear it. you don't want to publish the same blog three nights in a row, but next year you can go back and redo that. It's an important topic on marketing. It's an important topic on communication. My husband does it on networking. It doesn't matter. Uh, people need to hear it. They need to be reminded of the value of what we do. Uh, we're talking about, let's say, making sure that when you send out an email that we communicate and have an outgoing signature so people can reach us or when we write that blog that we have an outgoing way to do it. We may want to write it more than once to remind people. I'm going to just take a pause here. You're making me smile because you're reminding <laughs> me of what, you know, I, most of my career I've been a director with Fortune 100 companies and, and led some gigantic teams. And one of my mentors one, one time said, you know, you get frustrated because you're dealing with this caliber, caliber of executive who you expect more from sometimes. And I remember I was super frustrated. I'm like, I just don't understand why, why I have to keep repeating myself so often. And my mentor at the time looked at me and he said, Colleen, the day that you drive home and feel like you've said the same thing over and over and over again for most of your career is a day that you know that you've hit that level of success because you're consistent, you're delivering one strong, clear message. And, and I always remember that because People don't ignore it the first time because they don't want to. They're just overwhelmed at the moment. So there is some real value in hearing that twice or three times. Participants, hey, there's some. There's a Q&A button on your screen. There is a chat Please. button. You can chat privately or to the group. Please, let's like ask some questions or um, I can just roll, baby. I can just talk all day long. So if you want real questions answered by Peggy Bug, Peggy Bud. Now is the time to get those questions flowing on the Q&A or in the chat box, so please feel free. 
Okay, let's. Um, we talked about you know how to um, how to connect and come up with those ideas. Um, where are we, Peggy? What's next? You know, how about um, I? You know, I think about purpose and why we talk about a lot of that with Small Business USA with business owners. When your why, you know, I was listening to this great um, speech the other day, and it was someone who. I had listened to it for a really long time. He was in front of a new audience and he told his life story. And as he told his life story and it rolled out, his why and his purpose was so intense for me that someone who I only thought, honestly, I only followed because he was kind of trendy and a lot of people listened to him. He turned me into a fan because he shared his purpose and his why with me. And we talk about that often, but how do you do that in blogging? What, how do you, you know, should you have a purpose? Oh, well, for I, every, I guess a purpose. Am I going to read something that doesn't seem to have a purpose? I'm time is the most um, used up. It's a resource that we can't get back. So if I don't have, what I'm going to read doesn't have a purpose. If it isn't going to touch me, if it isn't going to give me something that I can use, I'm going to skip on to the next thing. We know that most people, when they read a blog, um, don't necessarily start reading it and read it like they're reading a novel. They skim it. They look for it. That's why when you're writing a blog, make sure that we understand what the purpose of this blog is. The title's going to help us a lot. That's going to probably even drive us to read it in the first place. There should be uh, some, at the very beginning, we should know what you're saying so that I um, understand what I'm going to be reading about. What is this purpose? It should be timely. Uh, if, if you're talking about how to, you're, you've got an air conditioning business and you want to get people to contact you because that your air conditioner has to be serviced, well, are you going to do that in the middle of July when everybody's air conditioning is hoping it's working right? No, that's not a timely blog. You want to do it either that um, at the end of the season or the beginning of the season reasons. If you're writing about the value of not feeling like, why isn't my air conditioning working in the middle of July when it's 110? So you want to make sure your blog is, is very timely. You want to make sure that it has a purpose and it's going to attract not only um, maybe give something to your current customers, but it's going to drive things to either attract new customers or at least touch a point that people that read it are going to forward it or to say, well, did you read that? Pass it along. So it has to have a purpose. And it also, I believe, has to have a summary. Um, I think that whether you're doing a blog or whether you're doing a a PowerPoint presentation or anything else, we need to bring some closure so people, you know, we kind of tie it up. So sometimes people might only read that purpose of it and then kind of the summary or the conclusion. And it's also good in some blogs, as I said, the comment piece or a call to action, something that somebody can do. They can either, oh, and if you want more information, click here or uh, get my free thing or, you know, if you read my blog, um, come in and I'll give you, you know, 10% off on your product. Uh, so that if people have something, that's going to help drive people to the blog too. Yeah, you know, I'm really good at um, putting that one, two, three. I, I assume everybody's going to skim and read. Now, let me ask you this. When you write a blog, I think about public speaking. You know, anybody who's ever done any public speaking or taking a class or, you know, I remember in college, it's, you know, the first thing they do is they teach you to qualify yourself. Hey, I'm Colleen Ferrari. I have helped hundreds of businesses grow, expand their business, and this is why you should listen to me kind of thing, right? Um, I just wonder, is, do you have to qualify yourself when you write a blog or is just the, at the bottom, is that enough? I think so. I think that, first of all, if you have your information, if I question who you are and how you're making these, maybe I think outlandish statements, or maybe I think really valuable statements, I'm going to click. I'm going to go. I'm going to look at your LinkedIn profile. If I go to you and you have two, you know, 
two contacts and I don't it doesn't tell me anything about you I'm gonna say well I don't really think she really knows what she's talking about that's why I disagreed if I go and I see all your credentials all your experience I'm going to put weight on it so I don't think it because if every single blog you started by I'm Colleen and this is or I say I'm Peggy Budd I'm a communications expert I have to keep qualifying it I've wasted or spent time that now people are going to keep reading I don't think that at the end somehow or another have a link somehow or another qualify whether it's the name of your business um, your link whether it's your website or LinkedIn or Facebook, it doesn't matter. You need to have, and people are gonna do that if they question it. So I don't think you have to do it at the very beginning, but you do need to, to, to kind of introduce, give some content on that purpose. And the more you hone the purpose, uh, I personally don't see a nine page article as a blog, it's more like an article, but, you know, some people are doing it. Embarrassed us. <laughs> well, for him, and that's fine. But um, cheaper than I, the book. No, I'm and kidding. That's right. and, and, you know, and he can do that. And he's got his. He's just right. It's a chapter of a book. And yeah, some people do. But he's got a very specific audience and very specific followers that are going to do that. Versus, um, I probably get bogged down in what he's saying and say, so, I'm not going to read that. But that's because it's not touching my needs or it's not touching me because every blog is not going to be for every person any more than every novel or every article is going to be for every person. So you've got the purpose of your blog. It's got to be timely, it, whether it's something that's current in the news, whether it's something that um, is going to connect people to, they're getting people to uh, do their buy their product or use their service and then it's got to have so we've got that purpose we've got it timely it needs to have um, a summary or a conclusion so people understand what happened and then some way that people can connect with you because if you write a great blog and nobody can reach you well, what good was it so let's go back to my team member who wrote the blog that um, oops um, that <laughs> upset you so <laughs> Me. It can no, no. I just think it, I'm teasing. I know, I'm I know teasing. you are, and I'm teasing too. It, it just, I felt that it was too technical, but it was too technical for me. And if it met his audience, uh, and it was so much information, it was, you know, how to do something that was sort of the title, and I was attracted to well, how to do it. And then it was like every idea had so much information, but it worked for him, and that's great. Right. I, you know, I wonder how do you, you know, I have some pretty strong ideas about how you find your audience and how you specifically um, write a blog for them. And I sometimes can be schizophrenic because I help so many different, schizophrenic is the wrong word, but I help so many different business owners. And, you know, this week I could be helping a grocery chain. Last week I was helping a group of country club, you know, country club, um, management group so sometimes my head kind of goes in all of these different places and a different blog comes out i own networking golf i own small business usa sometimes i end up in this space where i almost feel schizophrenic and i think about my audience <laughs> and i wonder if i confuse them because of that so what advice would you give me about how to make sure that i'm directing my writing style to the right audience and is that okay to be a little you know multiple personality disorder Go I on. think it's okay because it's I would give you the same advice that I say when when I'm helping people create an elevator pitch uh, it doesn't have to be the same because the audience you have isn't going to always be the same if, if you're writing about golf um, if I don't play golf and I have nothing to do with golf I might just, oh, I don't read it. Whereas if you're talking about um, some ownership of, of, a, of a country club and I'm thinking about, well, I belong to a club and I want to make sure that, or I run a club and I want to make sure, so I'm going to be attracted. Remember, everybody isn't going to read every single blog you write because it's not going to touch them. Going back to what I said earlier, if you make everybody happy and reach everybody, then you're really reaching nobody. 
Peggy, can you give me maybe two or three things that you make sure are in everything that you write to help you, and I'm kind of probably catching you off guard with this, but to help you connect better with the audience? Are there two or three things that you want to make sure in every piece of content so that the audience feels more familiar with you or feels a better connection? What advice would you give us on that? I think what I always do is whatever my purpose is, I try to reiterate and bring back to that purpose in, in different ways. It's kind of what you were saying. You can't, you know, you say the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, a blog really is you're saying the same thing over again, over again, except in a different way. So if, uh, if we're talking about your, uh, if, if I'm writing a blog about the difference in communication styles with men and women, I might be talking about uh, how do you get a seat at the table? How as a, as a woman, are you going to be more successful? So every example I give, I'm going to come back to that theme of, and that will help, you know, in maybe in a little different way, but that will help you get a seat at the table or that's why women aren't getting a seat at the table. So I will keep coming back to it in two, three, four paragraphs in different ways with different examples. I think that's my advice. And then you tie it up with a conclusion. And if you do, and you've brought just two or three points, um, and I would say probably three points is good because um, I think you know the rule of three. I don't know. Do you know Debbie Fay? She's written a great book called Nail It. She does a lot on presentations and she loves to talk about the rule of three, which I, people remember three things. They don't remember, they're less likely to remember a lot of things if you throw out four, five, six, but if you remember three and, you know, it, it goes to so many things that we have in threes, including, you know, morning, um, afternoon and evening, you know, um, things related to the church. We've got uh, everything we think of as three because we can remember three things. Her example of that is uh, if I throw you a ball, you'll catch it. If I throw you two balls, you'll probably figure out how to catch it. Maybe three, you'll catch it. If I throw four balls and you're holding three, you're going to drop them all and remember nothing. So the same thing when writing a blog, if you have three good points, when I finish reading it, I can remember those. If you have five or six, I'm probably going to forget everything. There's just too much there. So pare it down to those to something so that I can remember what you've written and then go out and say, well, she has some good information for me. Yeah. Jack Welsh, I, I love his rule of three too. That's what I first immediately was drawn on. You can't drive change or implement more than three things successfully at one time. You just cannot give them the right amount of time and energy and focus. So same thing, I, I wrote down her name because I think that's interesting, Debbie Fay. But yeah, thank you, thank you. So what, what do we have left and are there any questions out there? Okay, let's see. Well, we have left to the fact that, we, and we've talked about it a lot, I think that a blog is your voice and my blog is going to sound different than your partner's blog and it's going to sound different than your blog but it's who I am so if people read what I write or people watch me on this video and they like me and they understand my passion and energy then that's going to drive them to contact me and use me to help them in their business if they don't like what they see then they're not going to do it if they don't like what they read and we can't have everybody like us, so we have to be authentic. We can't pretend. I think my voice is different than other people's voices, um, and that's okay. Uh, we don't also have to all, our blogs, a blog, as you said before, doesn't have to be the same. It's, it's not some sort of regimented that it all has to be a 300 words or a thousand words. It can be as short or as long as you want it. It can be different on different days. Um, you just need to get your name out there and keep blogging and letting people know who you are, how you feel, what you think, so that they see you as an expert, so that they begin to really get to know you. Um, we don't like to do business with people that we don't know and don't like and don't trust. 
So, so Peggy, I don't know if you can see the question on the screen. I can't, I can't okay, I'm going to read it to you. Peter Suska, hello, my friend. I miss you. It's been way Hi. too long since we talked. But Peter has a question for you, Peggy. He's saying, I have some unique services and perspectives that I want to get out there. I conduct many seminars, but that doesn't reach out to the masses. If I want to brand these unique concepts, should I write an article, book, or a blog? How do you decide which is the best vehicle? Well, they're all different things. First of all, if you write a blog and it's a sh on one unique idea, you can start getting it out there immediately. If you wait and say, I'm going to write a book, it's going to be a long time before you get the book out. Book out. Now, every blog that you write, you can incorporate into a book or your um, an article. So again, a blog and an article, uh, it really is going to depend on where it's where it is. If you want to write an article for a magazine, uh, it's going to be a little more in depth probably than a blog, but you can take a few of those blogs and put it together and make an article. So I would say if you have unique ideas, Peter, I do it all. Uh, and you can begin with those blogs as a way to kind of get yourself started in writing, but save those because a lot of books are really just a whole bunch of blogs or articles that have been put together and connected and linked so that they're meaning and that's where they started. Awesome. I love that answer. I, I know many, many people who have written books based on just collecting all their blogs and then, I guess, again, repurposing them. And Absolutely. I think when you put the word article, if I could put, add my two cents, um, there's, a, there's a great need. There's a huge lack of writers in the world today. The, you know, when we look at media and magazines and, and some of these publications, people don't buy publications like they used to. So there's this big gap around payroll for some of our best resources even. So if you treat an article like PR and write something like a press release that mimics an article that's informative, that teaches, and it gets your view out, it's really great for your business. Um, but also can be dual purpose too. So I definitely, if anybody has not leveraged that press release piece, you know, the trick is, and we have a few members who have taught us this and been on, I think um, one of the best ones is um, Jonathan Crackle from It's Relevant. If you guys want to go back into our archives, he did a great, he and his um, producer, they were with um, MTV and a lot of different other giant publications before they started It's Relevant. And they did a, they did a an Ask the Expert call for us, and they really talked about how to get that article accepted as a press release. So definitely go back to our archives and find that because it's just such a good good post. I have another okay. question for you. Oh, okay. nice to be back. Well, before you ask the question, I just want to say make sure when you think about, isn't it great to have people wanting more? If I give them everything then they don't have to come to me, right? If I, if I wrote, you know, the great American novel with all the answers to communication and one thing, oh, they could just, if they wanted to read it. So when you write a blog, want your reader looking for more, whether he's looking to read another blog, I get people who write things and say, I can't wait to read what you write next. I, I'm going to disagree with that just a smidge because okay. a book can be an incredible marketing tool for you. So I, we don't have to talk about how now, if anybody, there's also um, Ann Shabani did a great, she did another Ask the Expert call for us um, about writing a book, but a book is a very, very, very well, valuable marketing I'm, tool, I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing that it's a powerful tool. I'm just saying that you always, when you're writing a blog, you want to kind of uh, pull people in so that they are looking for more. Oh, good They're call. reaching out to you. Sorry. Not that, yes. I think you yeah. misunderstood me. Yeah, leave them wanting more. Leave them wanting more. Give them you a reason. You want them leaving. Want, even if you wrote a book, you want them leaving wanting more. Right. Because they want, you want them wanting you. Right. Because you're the business, and Love that's what it. you want. So what's the next question? Uh, I think it was just say. um his mind is a series of blogs. It's just Peter being funny, which I oh. love. I don't know if everybody could see it when it came up on the screen. No, I, okay. No, Peter, Peter Suska is just a great friend of Small Business USA. And um, he's got a great call, too, on safety that people should watch. All right. Let's talk. I don't think we talked about how often, how much, like 
how often should somebody write? We touched a little bit on it, but your husband, you said, writes every day. He's I think he's a wealth manager, right? Am I getting that? No, my husband runs the Financial Executives Networking Group, and then okay. he has that. We have a uh, financial consulting practice, but the networking group is a not for profit. If there's anyone out there who um, has people who uh, are in financial positions of controllers, treasurers, that type of thing, it's a, a great networking group, and we also provide. Um, as through a, the consulting practice, we provide uh, CFOs, controllers, treasurers, and we can turn it around quickly. But in he writes on the, for the networking group, uh, the FENG, he writes a blog every night on something, whether it's to do with networking, whether it's to do with marketing, um, presenting yourself, uh, and, and just any, any topic related. And he does it every night, but he does a lot of repurposing because he's written so many articles and they're always linked to uh, something that has either happened or a problem somebody's called him with. I write when something sort of when the spirit moves me, but I think that I probably should write more often. I just don't seem to be able to find the time and time is the problem. I think the more regimented you can become, the better. Uh, and it depends on what you're looking to do, but that's the best way because if people are looking for, oh, it's Monday morning, she's going to have her blog out, or it's the end of the month, I think that's a great, great uh, marketing tool. Yeah, be consistent whatever you do. If you decide it's so. going to be once a week, do it every Tuesday or every Wednesday. Be consistent because that's where you'll. most people are creatures of habit and routine. They don't realize it, but they check LinkedIn every Wednesday at 11 o'clock or whatever because something there's this trigger in their life that this is this space and this is when they think of it. Most people don't realize that they do it themselves, but human nature is very consistent like that. So if you post on Twitter, post on Twitter forever, and here's my theory is I think Twitter is going to get more and more popular because of Donald Trump. And I he also so. went on to Facebook. I think we're going to see this resurgence of Twitter, though being a more of a fundamental tool. Um, but I, I definitely, um, if it's, if it's consistent, I would recommend if you can do it once a week, people are going to know who you are and you're going to get your name out. But like Joe Petrowski every day, but it's small and it's a joke and it might not even be a hundred words that day, but you, you, you create this audience and people look forward to it. So, that's what it's about relationships through writing relationships and trust and um, making yourself unique and letting people know who you are and what you do. Another great place to, to blog is if you know people who have um, a, a newsletter, I know my husband loves to have guests write in his newsletter. I've written I have uh, people, and I've written in not only my husband's, but I've written in other people's newsletters. It's a great way to, to create um, another way to write your blog by asking to be a guest writer. And I'll tell you, most people who have newsletters or um, are really thrilled to have more content and to get you, and there at the end, have your link have all the information so that people can find you and people will find you that way. So that's just another place to go and another way to get your information out there. Just another little thought, you guys, if you're, I am thinking everybody's, I, I tried to look at the list of names before, but I believe everybody on the call is a business owner. Heck, have everybody write on your blog. If you have a page on your website, because what's going to happen if, if I post something from Peggy Bud? I'm going to put this recording on our website. What's going to happen? Peggy's going to go in there and say, oh, I'm going to share this, right? Where is she sharing it from? My website. So what's happening, anybody who watches this gets to go back to my website, right? And this is our ultimate goal, get people to come back to our website, find out who we are, know how to connect with us, and so on and so forth. So don't be afraid to invite other people. It's not competition. It's brilliance, right? Right. Right. It is. You, you, you know, we all, because think about it, we all have good businesses and we're all unique. Even if we're competing with each other, everybody meets a different need. So let's, uh, let's make sure that we 
make our customers happy and that's a great way to, to introduce something else. Peggy, I hate to do this, but it is 11.11. Can you believe it? We have just gone on and on for an hour and 10 minutes. I am so excited to have you on here, but I think we have to wrap up. I went through our notes and I feel like we covered so much today. So hopefully everybody got something out of it. But right now, you guys, if there's any questions that are left out there, any advice, there is um, right now is the time to ask because we need to wrap this up. Okay, and I'm just going to, because as I said, I believe in summarizing. So let's just remember that your blog is going to showcase you, your, co and your company, and your expertise. So you need to do it. It's going to build trust and relationships. Nobody does business with anyone if they don't trust them, if they don't like them. So we want to make sure that when you write that blog that they develop that, I like her, I like him, I like what they have to say. Blogs are going to increase your bottom line because they're going to drive traffic to your website. They're going to help your brand. They're going to help you as an individual. And But getting back to what we were saying, they need to have a clear purpose. They're going to have to have a target audience. And the audience can change from blog to blog. You can post at different places to... Uh, if you post it on a technical website, if it's a technical uh, comfort versus something more generic that you post on LinkedIn, catchy titles will always help. And remember, before publishing your blog, uh, even though some people don't do it, my opinion is read it, edit it, and then possibly do a little rewriting and editing and reading before you publish. And hire an editor or a copywriter or Peggy Bud, Bud to write it for you, please. And, <laughs> I, and, and my advice, uh, because of, and maybe it's my learning style, but you want to hear your blog through the ears of your listener rather than through your own head. So sometimes it's really helpful, helpful to read that blog out loud when you're reading it because that will give um, you the ability to hear it in a little different way. If you just read it yourself in your head, you're going to read it and have your own voice and you're going to hear it that way. So, and, and I would also, if I could add to that and you wouldn't know this by looking at my blogs, but um, take some time, let it sit, let it yeah. stay on your desktop for a day and reread it the next day. Because when you reread it right away, all your intentions, your brain kind of fills in gaps. Your brain, it's still too familiar for your brain, so you won't catch everything. That's absolutely right. Uh, and, and I would say that also goes to certain, a, a lot of other things that you write. Don't do it, that, that write and click and send. We are too used to doing that, and I think that we don't necessarily um, do ourselves any justice by not taking the time to let it settle and make sure that it's clear. And sometimes another thing is let somebody else read it. Somebody that, um, whether it's somebody in your business, whether it's some, uh, a personal colleague or friend that you respect, let somebody else read it before you publish it. Uh, and you can do the same for them. You might have a, a blogging buddy. Here's my blog. Here's your blog. Just read it. And they, you don't, you know, the thing is not only do you not have to be in the same industry, but it might be best if you're not in the same industry, because if they understand it, you know that the readers will understand it. That's funny. I tell my husband, I'll so apologize to all of you. I had my husband start reading my blogs that I write before I post them. And he's a research scientist, so we could not be further apart from what we do and how we think from a uh, career perspective. But he said, Colleen, you must tell people 15 times every blog how much you appreciate and how thankful you are. And every letter I write, it's the same thing. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I write it like 10 different times. But I do, um, I do appreciate you, Peggy. And I appreciate your Thank time you. and all everybody who jumped on today. And um, I probably write it so often because I'm so thankful. So um, with that, I want to just really thank you, Peggy, for your time today. I know you took an extraordinary amount of time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And I thank you for creating this slide deck for us so everybody knows how to get a hold of you. And if you're listening to this instead of um, watching it, it's Peggy at PeggyBud.com. And um, I'll let you wrap up, Peggy. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Colleen, so much for having me. And thank you, listeners. I hope that I hope you have some takeaway about blogging and you're not quite as nervous and maybe willing to do it and get started. If you need anything, whether it's related to blogging or any other area of communication, please contact me at Peggy at PeggyBud.com. You can contact me through LinkedIn. Um, and I also have a Speaking Skillfully page on Facebook. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, everyone. And um, it's my name is Colleen Bader, and you can actually reach me at Colleen at Colleen at Colleen at smallbusinessus.com. You'll get a follow-up email just thanking you for your participation. If you don't have any of this information, just respond to that, and I'll get you in touch with Peggy. I'd be happy to facilitate or share any of those past recordings if you couldn't find them for whatever reason. Thank you, and here's to your success, you guys. Get writing. Get writing. Thank Good you, Peggy. Everyone. Bye. Have, Have a great, great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.